Anthony, um, we'll just start off with a pretty basic question. Um, how have the first 100 days gone so far? We, we've been pretty pleased with the first 100 days. Uh, uh, I've been using this time to really get out throughout the district, holding town hall meetings, uh, holding uh, smaller Brindisi at your business meetings where I get to go into local employers and talk to employees uh, about their needs and employers about their needs throughout the region. Uh, we're working very hard on our two committees, Veterans Affairs and Agriculture, to address the needs of our farmers and our veterans throughout the district, uh, and really trying to re represent the entire district. As I always said, I, d I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican, I want everyone to feel respected when they call our office, because we work for the people, and uh, we want to make sure we're being responsive to the needs of the community. Anything about uh, working in Washington that surprised you so far? Uh, I, I guess uh, I always get that question, and I'm not, I, I never have a good answer for it, but I, uh, I always feel that uh, coming from a legislative background prior to being in Congress uh, helped prepare me for what to expect now. You have a lot of new members of Congress who get frustrated because their priorities don't get passed on day one, where I understand coming from a legislative background that it takes time. You have to build relationships, you've got to build coalitions with other members, and that's how you get your priorities passed for your district. Have you suffered any consequences that you know of for your vote against Nancy Pelosi? No. Uh, that was a, a commitment that I would made during the campaign. Uh, we followed through on that commitment. I felt uh, when I make a promise, I'm going to keep that promise. Having said that, I'm working with the Speaker. Uh, I'm working with members on both sides of the aisle to try and get things done and uh, have not felt any repercussions whatsoever from, from that vote. Uh, so one of your key issues, and you're on the committee, like you mentioned, has been uh, working on behalf of agriculture. Yes. Um, and, you know, agriculture is a very broad term, but, of course, a, a, a fairly dominant form in our region is, is dairy farmers. Yes. And they seem to be struggling quite a bit. What, what can be done on their behalf? Well, I, I get a chance to uh, meet with farmers on a regular basis, and we had set up uh, an agricultural advisory committee made up of farmers here in the district so I can communicate with them on a regular basis about some of the needs that we're facing here in the 22nd district. Uh, our farmers are struggling right now and uh, farming and agriculture is one of our most important industries. It's a way of life here in upstate New York and farmers are struggling with all kinds of issues. Tariffs are, are problematic, uh, trade policy, uh, uh, immigration issues, and we want to make sure that we're supporting our farmers uh, any way we can to put policies in place uh, that will help them thrive and grow uh, and stay in business. Yeah. So while you're working on the federal level, are you at all concerned about some of the legislation that's uh, advancing in Albany that the Farm Bureau opposes, things such as uh, allowing overtime for farm workers, allowing them to unionize, etc.? Uh, those are efforts that I had opposed when I was a, a member of the State Assembly. And I, I feel the issue right now, uh, many farms are teetering on the brink. And any additional regulation now coming from the state level is going to send uh, many farms over the cliff uh, and out of business. And these are small family farms. These are farmers who want to do right by their workers, who are trying to earn a living. No one's looking to become a millionaire. They just want to be able to support their families, uh, produce their product, and help feed the country. Uh, I, I believe our farmers can feed the world if given the opportunity, uh, but we have to make sure we have the right tools and resources, and we're not putting additional burdens on top of farmers uh, that are going to send them out of business, because these farms have been in, in the family for generations. You mentioned in this release here that you've introduced or co-introduced five bills, um, some having to do with cable, some having to do with farming and some with the robocalls. H have any of those bills yet passed? So we've had uh, four amendments uh, that we have passed so far. We're working on legislation right now. Uh, we always uh, bring on a Republican co-sponsor uh, to lead on the bill as well, because I want the bills that we're working on to be bipartisan. I think that will create a, a better product and, and more acceptable for the American people uh, down the road when it's implemented into law. Uh, we're working this week uh, to introduce legislation uh, to combat a problem that is facing the country right now, veteran suicide. Uh, that's an issue that uh, should never happen, and we want to make sure that we're giving our VA the tools and the resources they need to uh, help our veterans who have sacrificed for our country, uh, help them be able to cope with any of the issues they're having when they re return home from, uh, from military life. Yeah, our upstate uh, representation in Congress is quite bipartisan. Do yeah. you work well with your uh, colleagues, uh, Republican upstate? Absolutely. We work very well with uh, Mr. Reed, uh, Mr. Katko, 
uh, Ms. Stefanik, uh, we work with Mr. Delgado to, to our east. Uh, we're really working with all of our representatives uh, on legislation that will help move upstate uh, New York forward. It's great to have that relationship because we all serve this region and it benefits the region if we all work together. Um, any other priorities uh, that you'd care to mention that we haven't touched on yet? Well, I, I think we're going to continue to respond to the needs of the community. Uh, I don't pay a lot of attention to, to national uh, messages. My, my message is driven by what I hear here locally uh, from the town hall meetings that we're doing, from the Brindisi at Your Business stops that we're having, and just conversations with constituents throughout the district. They have said loud and clear that uh, they want to see something done about uh, skyrocketing, skyrocketing uh, prescription drug prices, uh, and we're, we're going to advance legislation this year in the House of Representatives to combat the high cost of prescription drugs. Uh, we have to do more to combat our opioid epidemic. Uh, I support more treatment and prevention programs and education uh, to try and uh, uh, stop this, this, this problem from happening. Uh, we have to do more to help lower premiums for health insurance. Uh, and we have to try and stabilize the Affordable Care Act to do that. Uh, but we're going to continue to respond to the needs of the community, and as issues come up, we'll, we'll be able to address those, and our staff will be able to address any issues that constituents have when they call our office. Uh, in, a, in a fairly publicized way, you've taken on our local cable and Internet monopoly. Yes. Um, and a lot of that, you know, I, I think people can sympathize with based on various com consumer complaints. How much, though, is your concern over the expansion of rural broadband part of your frustrations? Uh, the lack of expansion uh, of rural broadband is a, is a major part of my frustration uh, with our cable company here in this region because they are a major corporation, and as part of their agreement when they merged here in New York State, they were going to expand to uh, X number of households uh, that did not have access to high-speed Internet. And what we have seen is they have not lived up to that promise. Uh, the f first bill I introduced in the House of Representatives was our Cable Transparency Act. So if a company like our local cable provider is fined by a state public service commission, they have to report to the FCC what are their internet speeds, what is their pricing, uh, what are they doing to expand into rural areas and small towns and other communities that are underserved for cable. Uh, and if they're not, then the FCC can take action against them. Uh, I, I, I don't like the fact that we have these monopolies that are able to uh, raise prices and control the market. We have to get back to more competition and get back to where we can encourage more smaller providers to get into the business because they're the ones that are really going to take the chance to expand into these underserved areas. I know we asked you about this earlier this week, but within this format, let me ask you once more. Where do you stand on the possible impeachment of Donald Trump? Uh, I'm not supportive of impeachment. We have to use this time over the next year and a half to try and get as much done as we can. We have to work on an infrastructure bill. Uh, our roads, our bridges, our water and sewer systems, rural broadband, uh, our utility grid, these are all things that need investment from the federal government uh, to update uh, and put people back to work. We have to work on prescription drugs. we got to work on health care. Uh, we have to work on our opioid crisis. Uh, we need support for our farmers and our veterans. These are the things that I'm going to focus on over the next year and a half. There's a lot of distractions down in Washington, but I'm laser focused on the needs of this community. Great. All right, well, speaking of distractions, let me veer into politics a little bit here. Already you have some Republican challengers who have announced, uh, and even I, I believe according to some published reports, uh, uh, your predecessor, uh, Claudia Tenney, has even expressed some potential interest. What, what do you think about this never-ending election cycle? It's, it's, it's early, and there's going to be plenty of time for politics. Uh, what I, when I talk to people about this issue, they always ask, I can't believe, they always say, I can't believe you got to run every two years. Uh, and they say, why do they make it four years? And that's something I could even be supportive of, but we should couple that with term limits. Uh, which is something I also support. Uh, but there's going to be plenty of time for, 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 for the politics. My goal right now is to be the best representative of this community that I can be, to respond to constituents when they call our office uh, for Social Security issues or a veterans issue or an IRS issue or whatever issue it may be with uh, a federal agency, that our caseworkers are there to help uh, and that I'm out there as much as I can in the community, visible and, and responding to the needs of our constituents. However, you could say this could be a pretty uh, important election, not only sure. because it's sort of, you know, after your, your freshman term, 
But also the fact of the matter is the calendar says that there will be a census, there will be redistricting, yeah. and unless the Republicans take back control of the New York State Senate, it's expected that Democrats will have a free hand in that redistricting. And sure. although upstate will likely lose a district, uh, good chances they'll gerrymander you into a much safer district. Do you expect that? You never know. Uh, uh, New York did establish an independent redistricting commission uh, years ago, uh, which will be responsible for this uh, census and the, and the redrawing of lines. I believe the line should always be drawn fair. And I, and I hate when uh, the Democrats are to blame for this and the Republicans are to blame for this. Uh, they, they draw lines to protect incumbents. Lines should be drawn to reflect the communities uh, that the representatives are serving in, uh, not to meet the needs of the local member of Congress or state assembly or state senator. Uh, they should be drawn to keep communities of uh, similar interest together, uh, and then who comes out of that district as a representative is up to the people there. Great. All right, my last question is, uh, of the uh, 20 announced Democratic presidential <laughs> candidates so far, is there one or two that have caught your interest? Anyone you're ready to support? Well, Jim, I'm not making any big announcements on the show today. Uh, I'm not running for president, uh, although there's a lot of House members out there running for president these days. Uh, we're we're going to sit back and, and listen to what the, uh, what the representatives that are running are, are going to say. Uh, I, I believe that, and what I would say to anyone who's running for president, stick to the issues. Uh, when I talk to people in this community, what they worry about when they wake up in the morning is how are they going to afford their health insurance bills or, or their premiums? How are they going to pay for their prescription drugs? Uh, they just lost a loved one to a heroin overdose. What's being done to fight back that epidemic? Uh, how are we going to fix our crumbling roads and bridges? That's what the candidates who are running for president should focus on. Stay away from these issues that divide us at the national level and stick to those bread and butter issues that people in this community care about. All right, great. Is there anything else you'd like to add I didn't think to add? Something? I think we covered it all. All right, great. Thank you so much.